this way. Do we need to stop? Maybe. Sure. All right. That's Call the meeting of the City Council Finance Committee to uh, order for Monday evening, August the 17th, 2015. Mr. Chairman. 7.04 uh, p.m. Council. Mr. Chairman, if I could, uh, yes. colleagues, our uh, esteemed chairman and uh, council president celebrated a very special birthday last Thursday. Boy. So on behalf of the City Council, Mr. President, we hope you had a good day and we wish you a happy belated birthday. Thank you. Thank you. 35. Just, just one, just one year older it is That's now. All. It's, uh, <laughs> it's 61. But like a good friend of mine's father said, you're just getting started. So go. here we go, right? Uh, Councilors, good evening, and uh, guests as well. Just a couple of um, highlights uh, before we begin. Councilor DiNapoli could not be here uh, with us this evening. Council Rodriguez is uh, on vacation. Councilor Cruz is not able to be here with us uh, as well. Um, with that being said, we also have a couple of other. Uh, announcements um, pertaining to people not being here. Our city solicitor Phil Nazarello is uh, not able to be present this evening as well with us and he is um, invited on a couple of our, uh, our, our uh, uh, items this evening as well. And we also have, uh, I also have a note here from um, Moises uh, Parente indicating that uh, <coughs> they could not be present this evening. Um, uh, they apologize, been putting together information requested by this committee at our last appearance and was hoping to have it ready by this weekend. Uh, respectfully request an extension so we can present the requested information a couple of weeks prior to the second um, September meeting. There has been several people, I guess, involved in their task and what they're trying to get for us uh, on vacation. We're not able to um, get everything together to make sure that they have uh, this evening. I will indicate to you that each city councilor did receive the last uh, week to ten days ago they did receive the, the binder that we um, were discussing when they were here the last time so if that being that being said they have come forth with that information but there's other information so at this time I believe that item uh, is uh, number four on the uh, agenda so I would um, entertain a motion on that council chairman I'm gonna entertain a motion to continue agenda item number four second motion been made and second that we continue with that item and that'll be at our September finance meeting all in favor Opposed, we'll postpone that until um, that time. And councilors, I uh, will discuss with you at the end of the meeting our, our schedule uh, calendar for the next finance meeting in September. We're going to just change it up a, a, a little bit. Um, and that being, uh, with that being said as well, uh, I believe we can um, begin with item number one. Appointment. Lawrence Siskind as trustee of the Brockton Public Library for a three-year term ending in July 2018. Invited Lawrence Siskind. Good evening, Mr. Siskin. Hi, how are you? you? Good, how are you? Couldn't Any comments? Excuse me? Anything you'd like to say? No, I'm uh, very familiar with the uh, City of Brockton uh, Public Library, and uh, I would be honored to, be, to serve as a trustee for the three-year appointment. Very good. Mr. Chairman. Councilor, Councilor Sullivan, if I could. Yes, you may, Council. Mr. Siskin, how are you tonight? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, last year, this body uh, got a letter from Mayor Carpenter indicating that you would be deemed as outside legal counsel <clears throat> for specific purposes. Right. I have a couple questions about that because we haven't had any update on that. Has that, in fact, happened? Are you deemed as outside legal counsel? Well, I, I, I had to resign from that position because, unbeknownst to me, my son, who's my my partner at my law office had uh, taken on as a client a person who had a claim against the city of Brockton. So there was a conflict. And the city solicitor's office picked, out, picked it up on it, brought it to my attention, and so, of course, uh, I resigned. When was it that you resigned? Was it oh, shortly after you were appointed? Yes. So you didn't act in that capacity at all? Well, I did. I did act in that capacity. I did some work, yes. You did? Yes. Were you compensated by the city for that work? Yes, I did. Yes, I was. But it, it had, I believe it, I believe it was before, after I had uh, received the appointment for the personnel matters. So there really was no conflict in terms of what the work I had done. And so uh, it, it was very simple to do and the honorable thing to do. Right. The right thing to do. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councilor. Any other question? Motion Council. to recommend favor of the motion, uh, Council of the Chairman. Motion. I'd like to uh, ask. Uh, I'm not going to hold up this appointment, but I would like to ask for an accounting relative to that specific item. I'd like to see the dates of employment relative to Attorney Siskin and his compensation from the city relative to that matter as well. And that's in the form of a motion. Second. 
Motion been made. Uh, first motion was. I'm going to rescind my motion. Okay. So. He can just do his thing unless you want to do it a different way. Whatever way you want. Motion's been it. made and seconded to send back to the full city council with the stipulation that you want to see that information. Based I didn't make the motion to send it back to the city council, so I'll let someone else. Make okay. It. Councilor Duwau, do you, do you still gonna, want to say? I'm going to promulgate um, Councilor Sullivan's requirements into my motion to recommend favorably. Is that why don't, why don't we do that? That'll be, do that? That'll be fine. Yep. Yeah, Great. It, it Which would mean through. that we would get a thorough counseling, but it would come from um, the law of the auditor's office, I assume. It would either be from the auditor's office or, or it would have to come from, from uh, Attorney Nazarella's office, I okay, would believe. So who would follow up with that? Yeah. Um, I'll, well, I'll follow up with it. With, I'll follow up with this council president to make sure that we have the information and, and Attorney Federoff's here to, to hear it. So her and I will so talk much. tomorrow in regards to that. So your motion is to recommend favorably um, with the stipulation that we get a thorough accounting of um, Attorney Siskin's dates of employment, um, payments made, and cases handled. Second. Second. Do I have a second? Second on that. Mm -hmm. All in favor of that? Opposed? Motion well, carried. Well, Mr. President, uh, I, I think in light of the issue, you know, I've never, never had any of my work, either privately or on behalf of the city of Brockton, challenged like this. And uh, I'm not disposed to that, and I'm frankly surprised. Mr. Chairman, a vote's been taken under Robert's rules, right been, and, and I'm, not, I'm not asking him in his private. I'm asking him as he was paid as a public employee of the city of Brockton. It's fair game. We can redact anything about cases. I don't want anything right. about case sensitive. I want to know times of employment, dates of employment. He said he resigned, and I also like compensation. That's public uh, record information. Well, Thank you, Mr. Th Chairman. That is correct. Councilor Dubois, If on I the could motion. just add um, on the motion that... Um, I personally and professionally don't see this and this type of information that is being requested as any type of slight to your um, your wonderful service to the city because you've been wonderful to the city and what we've try to do here is to make the community a better place and you've been a real champion of that attorney Siskin so I don't um, I hope you don't feel offended um, it isn't meant to be that way we are very thankful for your service to Brockton and your volunteerism so I, I I'm I just hope that you know that we do uh, respect and appreciate everything you bring to the well, well council I very much appreciate yeah, your I kind thoughts you know that. but I don't appreciate Councillor Sullivan's comment or the need for this to happen. All right. At the, at the, well, at this time, at this time, Mr. Siskin, I mean, it has been it has been moved okay. in favor of recommendation. Yep. Go back to the full city council yep. uh, for us to act on next Monday evening, based in, in waiting for that data and, and uh, you know whether it changes at the point next Monday night. That I can't say what the council is going to do at that point, but I, I wouldn't think that it should. If okay. everything's if I, everything's the way no that it problem. should be, everything should be fine. I would. That doesn't think. mean I have to be happy with what's said. But whatever you want to do is fine with me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Siskin. Thank you. Item number two, Madam Clerk. Reappointment James L. Bates Brockton as a constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years. Invited James Bates. Is Mr. Uh, Mr. Bates here? I don't see Mr. Bates uh, present. Councilors. Uh, Chairman, if we could put that to the end of the agenda, maybe he's running a little late. Second. Oh. We'll hold that for the end of uh, that? end of the meeting. I don't even know if the Item number three, um, Madam Clerk. Order in compliance with the provisions of the election laws. Notice is hereby given that the special state primary will be held on Tuesday, October 6, 2015, and the special state election to be held on November 3, 2015. Invited John McGarry, Executive Director. Good evening, Mr. McGarry. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Councilors. Any, uh, it's, the war it's the warrant for the election, which we do before uh, every election that's held in the city of Brockton. It, it states the date, what's uh, going to be on the ballot, the polling locations, and the time the polls are open. Very good. Councilor uh, I, I did have one question. Councilor Sullivan. Mr. McGarry, good evening. Good evening um, relative to the November, November 3rd date, um, there's going to be two ballots, John. I just want to confirm that. There'll be the state yes. special election, then there's the, the 
general for the city? Correct. Okay. Because some two, people have asked me about that. It'll be two distinct ballots. The state, they cannot go on, the, the information cannot go on one ballot. One's a primary, one's, okay. One's okay. a city election, one's a local election, one's a state run election. And, and do you know, or could you maybe articulate to us how, will someone just come in, a voter, it, like they always do, and then they would ask for both ballots at the same time, or would they have to go back in line, or? It'll, it'll be one, one walk up to the, <coughs> the in table and to the out table. Uh, the, the question is the, uh, the terminology that will be used by my staff. I have to have clarification on that so that um, my people do and say the correct things. This is a first for us, uh, and as long as I can remember, that we've tied in a state and a city election on the same date. So we'll make sure through the Secretary of State's office that uh, all proper terminology and uh, way of handling the two ballots is, is taken care of in advance. It'll We'll use uh, the local media to get that information out. Thank you very much for the information, Mr. McGarry. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Council Dubois. Hi, Mr. McGarry. I just want to go through this because I've spoken with a lot of my constituents that don't realize that there's a special election. So we have a municipal election that has a primary on what date? On September 22nd. Right. And we then have there's a state a primary. We have a city preliminary on the 22nd. September. Uh, September 22nd. And then October 6th, we have a state oh, special election. Special primary. Primary. Special primary on October 6th. So and you go to your normal polling location and you vote for who's going to be our next state senator, a, a seat open when um, Senator Kennedy passed away, it's our a, state well, senator. Well, th this is the primary for that. So there'll, primary. Be, there'll be Democrat, Republican, Green Rainbow, and United Independent Party ballots available. And this is the only state senator Brockton has. Correct. Right? So it's an important one for Brockton residents to participate in. So that's October 6th. And then the general election for that state senate seat is November 3rd. Correct, along the with the only our city state election. senator we have. Yes. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Councilor. Any other Councilor? Stewart. I'm Mr. Chairperson. Mr. Yes. McGarry, how are you? Good, Councilor. So thank the you. cost for an election is about $100,000? Correct. Uh, and so we're incurring that cost for that special state primary election? Correct. With, okay. with the exception, Councilor, is the state picks up the cost of printing the ballots. <coughs> programming of the handicap uh, machines, the marking machines, and they also reimburse the city three hours of time. So what does that come to? It, I mean, you're talking 30, probably about $50,000. So they're, so they're covering half of the cost then, it's not pretty much. And uh, I'm just asking, but I'm assuming this is not possible, just to avoid confusing people and also in terms of cost, since we have the general on the same day, it's not possible to have the preliminary and the primary on the same day. No, because in a preliminary, every, it's nonpartisan, so everybody gets to vote on those ballots that wants to. Any registered voter in the city of Brockton can vote on a preliminary ballot. Primary is strictly related to the party member and the unenrolled voter. But they're separate ballots even in the general, though, you're stating. We will, but you're, you're also talking, Councilor, that there would be a total of five ballots. And that's, that's more confusing it's, than it's, two it's different It would be days. overwhelming at the polls. I got it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Council. Make a favorable recommendation back to full council. Second. 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 Motion's been made and seconded and sent back to the full city council. Favorable recommendation. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Thank you, uh, Mr. McGeary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, councils. Thank you. Item uh, number um, five. Resolved that the mayor be requested to appropriate money for a study of the Brockton Police Department <coughs> staffing span of control and to provide recommendations for reducing supervisory positions within the department and increase in patrol officers. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Police Chief. Good evening. How are you? How are you doing, Council President? Council, uh, Chief Crowley couldn't make it at a prior engagement. I'm here for him. Okay, very good. Councilors, this was postponed uh, from our last meeting as well, so. Uh, sure. If you have questions in regards to I can make a couple Stewart. of comments and may, I'm hoping, thank you for being with us too, good to see you again. Uh, just to simply recast the resolve, so my principal interest is, and maybe it's just my own confusion, I did have a conversation with Chief Crowley and others, but I'm still not quite getting it. So I'm not suggesting necessarily that this is a question about shifting the numbers of police officers from the top brass to the patrolmen, though that could be an effect of it. I'm just curious as to why you think the city council and the legislative branch should <coughs> dictate the specific number of top brass officers in the police department. That seems to me sort of odd and also takes away control from the police department to manage its own workforce. Well, I've talked to Chief Crowley and he told me he has no problem with any study that the council has to do. 
Say it again. He has no problem with any study that the council wants to do. So moving forward, I'm seeing if that makes sense. And you know, so the study itself, I'm hoping um, if the mayor approves the appropriation, it's not just looking at the ratio of top brass to patrolmen, but just is it unusual to have a city council dictate the number of officers is where I'm really trying to get at. Well, usually it's done by what the books say. Right. It's like one out of four, but I know it's, they've done studies before. We've looked at other departments. We're actually short staff supervisors from what I gather. I but see. the study would be good for both, whatever helps the department in the city. So has the chief decided to do the study then? No, he's, he's <laughs> waiting for the, he okay. has no objection. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so I, I want to ask the mayor, and then I know my colleagues may or may not have questions. So. so Good evening, Councillor. Good evening. So is this something that you think is worth investing some money in to um, look at? Are you going to approve the study? or what Well, you if the you know, council passes a resolve with some you know, specific guidelines with what you're looking for, I will certainly uh, you know, bring back the appropriation that you're asking for. Uh, when I discussed it with the chief, he felt that the um, statistics he had provided to the council a few months ago showed that if anything Brockton was probably below the average of cities our size in terms of supervisors to patrol officers um, but he clearly indicated that he was open-minded to working with any type of uh, study or review that the council may like to see happen okay and obviously too mr. mayor it's it's a snapshot to look at it at the moment but we never mm -hmm. know what the future will bring us in terms of budgets for the police department so I guess I'm more concerned about having specific numbers enshrined in the ordinance, yeah. which may not... I think you're talking about flexibility, right. I, I, I think. I think the so, the sure. ordinance is very restrictive. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Chairperson. Thank, thank you, uh, Council Stewart. Thank you, Mayor. Any, uh, any other... Yeah. Council Studinsky. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Mayor, can I ask you, have you sat and talked with the union yet about the impact bargaining for this? You can't implement any reductions without talking to them first. Why, yeah, why do you want to spend the money to get some information that we can't use. Right. The chief's position, oh, not too close. I think uh, the chief nor I are uh, recommending or lobbying for or intending to reduce the number of supervising officers. Um, and if that were contemplated and there were a change uh, uh, being brought forward by the council in terms of the numbers, uh, we absolutely would have to impact bargain that with the with the police supervisors union but I didn't see that this discussion had progressed to the point yet that it really required a uh, a bargaining session with the union I think uh, you know my understanding of the resolve right now is to uh, to bring someone in to take a look at it not necessarily recommending any specific actions so I think until the council indicated that they were looking to change something I mean Right now, this is dictated by the ordinance, so the only, the only one that's going to change it is the city council. Right. My worry is that word in there about the seventh or eighth word, money, appropriate the money. Mm -hmm. And I have to ask again, Cap, could I, will you ask the captain too? Is there a reason why we want to appropriate the money for study, fund a study that we can't do anything with until we impact bargain? I just, I get lost in that. Point I've been around a couple of days and gone through this many times. So I, right. Uh, I, I guess, you know, what the chief and I have both said is that if it's the will and intention of the council, if the council has a desire to bring someone in to take a look at this, then I will certainly uh, put it out on an RFP or a bid or whatever the proper procurement process would be. If we used a state college to bring in, we wouldn't have to do that. Um, but we would get a price and a scope of services and bring an appropriation forward to the council, which would be subject to council approval. Thank you very much. Councilor Isaac, you had a question? Uh, yes. Good mayor? evening, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, do we have an approximate number? Do we know what a study like this would even cost? I, I don't have an exact number, but I would, you know, if the council has a willingness to do this, you know, my general feeling is we don't have enough police officers, period, whether they're patrolmen, supervisors, or or whatever. I mean, I, I think our police department should have about uh, 40 to 50 more officers than we have right now. Uh, when you compare us to, you know, some other similar cities, I think within the budget constraints we have right now, that's not going to happen 
uh, overnight, but certainly I think that uh, we need to be working together on a long-term plan to increase the staffing of the police department with the uh, recruits that we have at the academy right now, nine, six more were in the process of the civil service selection process uh, with 15 new officers coming on that will actually get us uh, uh, two officers above full staffing. So it will actually be a net gain. Thank you. Also, well, Council, Council Stewart, did you have a follow-up? Yeah, to follow up. Just so three comments. Um, so I, I'm a reason why. Another reason why this concerns me is with the numbers being in the ordinance itself. If there were layoffs for whatever reason, right, um, <coughs> excluding um, you know seniority and all that sort of stuff, we would have to keep that exact same number of top brass, even if we significantly reduce the number of patrolmen, right? Just because it's in the ordinance, or no? I this think if you I think in the ordinance, the number of sergeants and lieutenants may have the flexibility of one spot. One um, spot, right? But, one is uh, yeah, um, but generally speaking, the ordinance is pretty specific, right. and uh, you know we certainly have to follow the ordinance. So, right, we would have to maintain the number of supervising officers that the ordinance calls for, regardless of how small the patrol staff would become, right? So that is one issue that I'd like for us to kind of, which is one reason why I like to kind of look at this to see if it should be ordained uh, in an ordinance to have those specific numbers. Uh, the second question or comment I have to my in response to my colleague, certainly we can't, whether there's a need for impact bargaining or not, you can never come to a negotiating table with the right information unless you do this, unless you do the study first. In other words, there's nothing to, I don't know, you, you, it doesn't seem smart to assume that you have to be at the point of negotiating before you have the information to negotiate with, right? No, so. I mean, I, I would consult with the law office, but, you know, my feeling is and until there was a specific action anticipated by the council that would change the ordinance, uh, we wouldn't have any need to, to bargain. But if the council uh, was considering changing the ordinance, then I think we would have to talk to the union. Okay. And, then, and thirdly, perhaps maybe it's uh, the next step would be to... Um, determine what the approximate cost would be and then bring that back to us yep. and that may allay people's concerns about sure. going on an expedition without... If, you know, if it's the council's desire that we go out and uh, put together a scope of services and, and get a price on it and bring that back to the council for consideration, you know, I certainly would be willing to do that. Right. Thank you, Mr. Barron. Thank you, council. Thank you, Mayor. Council Studensky. These are two <coughs> comments. Oh, Number one, I'll try to find one of the three studies that have been done previously when I was on the job. And number two, we actually bargained in the layoffs, a little bit of history, and sergeants, to keep the positions as it was, sergeants decided that they would answer certain calls, and it worked. Good supervisors, and you have them, their job as a supervisor is to direct the people where to go, when to go there, and to stop problems. And uh, I, I personally can't vote for something like this until I know for sure that we are going to be making a major move. I think to spend $100,000 on a survey, which we would have to do, there's no school that you can get in to do it for ZIP. Right. Uh, that's a patrolman. Yeah, I'm, my general feeling is we need more police officers, period. So I'm looking to I'm grow the force. With you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Mayor. Any other questions? Councilors, uh, obtain a motion to. But again, if, if I didn't make it clear, though, if the council has a desire for me to just simply contact a couple of outside consultants to get prices as to what they would charge for this type of study and bring it back to the council, um, I would be perfectly willing to do that without going forward and ordering the study, but just to bring back the information to the council. I honestly don't know what it would cost. Great. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Council, you're looking to do something like that and to bring it back to the next finance meeting? I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Chairman. I'd make a motion that ahead, we continue Council. this and ask the mayor's office to go out and look for the people who would take it on the bids okay. and find out what it would cost. I'm not Agreed. against anything like that. Second. Second. Okay. Motion's been made and, and seconded that we're going to continue this and we're going to ask for that information as Council Stadinsky has stipulated to the mayor and then uh, we'll take it from, uh, from that point. All in favor of that? Opposed? Very good. Thank you. Next, um, the next item. Uh, 
Madam Clerk. Order appropriation of 50000 from unappropriated fiscal year 2016 receipts of the general fund to the law department personal services other than overtime for purposes of fully funding the newly created position of senior assistant Sist city solicitor which was passed by ordinance number 156 approved on May 19, 2015 invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor. And filling in for uh, City Solicitor is our Assistant City Solicitor uh, Attorney Federoff, so she is here. Mr. Condon. Uh, good evening, Councillors. I think you may recall that during the budget hearings, uh, this issue came up. Uh, at the time the budget was submitted, there was an ordinance in uh, ordinance committee that hadn't been adopted finally to provide additional staffing in, city, uh, in the uh, city solicitor's office. So the budget was uh, filed with a sufficient amount of money to pay for the structure that was <coughs> anticipated in that ordinance. However, after the budget was filed, the uh, ordinance committee recommended to the full city council and the city council adopted a different ordinance which had the position of a senior assistant city solicitor in there. During the budget hearings, we informed you that we're about a $50,000 short to pay for that and there was a recommendation made to cut the outside council budget for the law department by 50000 to provide funding with the view that probably would save that amount of money with the additional staffing. So what we're doing here now is asking for the appropriation and it's basically paid for by that budget cut to provide the funding for the ordinance as it now exists. Thank you, Mr. Conn. Councilors, any questions for the CFO? Motion recommend favor. Second. second. Motion made properly second and favorable recommendation back to the full city council. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, motion carries. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Conn. Uh, Madam Clerk, agenda item number seven, please. Order appropriation of six million three hundred and ninety five thousand six hundred and thirty one dollars from the fiscal year two thousand and sixteen unappropriated estimated receipts of water and No, I'm sorry, Madam Clerk. If we could if we could go on to agenda item number eight, I'd rather have the president chairman here when we talk about number seven, if we could. Sure. Any objections? Seeing none, we're gonna move forward. Agenda eight, we'll come back to seven. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Order appropriation of 700000 from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health Substance Abuse Prevention Collaborative Grant to the Office of the Mayor Substance Abuse Prevention Collaborative Grant Fund. The purpose of this grant is to implement local policy practice systems and environmental change to prevent underage drinking and other drug use. There is no grant match from the city. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, Chief Financial Officer. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening. Uh, the anticipated grant, or the grant is for 100000 a year. The 700000 total is an, an anticipated total amount that would come in over the, the life of the grant. But the, the grant is uh, 100000 per year, obviously subject to the state continuing to fund it each year. This is one of the first uh, initiatives coming uh, from Governor Baker's work on the opiate crisis. This particular grant did exist before, but it was limited to prevention of underage drinking. And in the revised grant now, it's been expanded to include all other drug use. So um, this is uh, 100,000 per year. It is, uh, although the Brockton is the applicant for the grant, there are other communities involved. It was one of the requirements of the grant that you have other communities. They're looking for these to be regional. Uh, so Whitman, East Bridgewater, Bridgewater, and Rockland would also be seeing benefits from this 100,000 per year. It's, it's designed to be a regional initiative, but it had to be municipalities of a certain size and, and qualifications to apply. Uh, there has been an RFP put out on it. Uh, it was awarded to High Point, and they're at the point now of doing their assessments. So they have not said specifically what the 100,000 will be spent on, but it will be regional and it will be to help prevent both uh, teenage drinking and drug use. Motion recommend favorably. Uh, on the motion? On the motion. Yeah, and, there, and there is no match. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just, thank you, uh, Mr. Welcome. President. I just want to ask, you said that this, um, this came before in, a, in the grant form, but it was limited and now it's expanded and uh, the funding was increased from the, the previous version. We had, a, we had a previous grant. I think it was health imperatives that administered it last time. Uh, this time the RFP went to High Point, mm -hmm. um, but it is regional in nature. So it's a, it's a grant program that has previously existed, but the governor uh, changed the scope of it to not have it limited to alcohol, but to include all drugs. Okay, and my question though is, um, say for instance something happens with the funding. You said that this funding is subject to kind of, you know, state 
availability or whatever. That's how I understood that. Is this something that we have to maintain even if we don't? No. If we're not we, awarded we, the grant or if the grant dries up or this something? This is going to be a year to year basis. Okay, so it's guaranteed? So all, they the 100000 is guaranteed. All they put out on the RFP was one year at 100000 Okay. So there's no, there's no risk to the, to the city owning this in the future if the state didn't fund it. Okay. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Any other questions? Council <coughs> Sullivan, Chairman, if I, had, I just had a question for Mr. Conant, if I could, Mr. Oh, Mayor. sure. Mr. Conant. <laughs> Mr. Conant, sorry. <laughs> Good evening. Question for me, I take it. Council yeah. Sullivan. I do. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Conant. Mr. Conant, the Mayor just indicated it's 100000 and over the expected term of the grant it will be 700000 should, should that appropriation be reduced to the actual 100 grand for the year? When it it, let me just take a quick look at the uh, order, Councillor, and the, match it up to the grant. Yes. Should be. I think so, yes. I mean, that's, that's what the, uh, the award letter says, 100,000. 100,000. Yes. And then next year we projected 100, and then for seven yes. years in theory. Yes, that's right. It's 100,000 for the year. Okay. Yes. Oh, apologize for that. That was our error. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Conner. Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Council. Any other uh, questions? I believe Chairman, we'll if motion. No other questions. I'm going to make an amendment to the appropriation okay. uh, stated in the order. Um, appropriation stated as such is 700,000. I would reduce it by 600,000 to have the actual hard number of $100,000 in the appropriation request. That's in the form of a motion. Second. 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 I so will then make, make a favor of recommendation back as amended to the full council. Okay. Um, on uh, Councilor Sullivan's motion, all in favor of that? Opposed? Now we'll make a recommendation as amended. as amended to go back to the full city council for next Monday's evening. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back uh, as amended to the full city council for uh, next Monday evening. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, I believe we're going to go back to number seven, I believe. Order appropriation. $6,395,631 from the fiscal year 2016 unappropriated estimated receipts of Water Enterprise Fund to the DPW Water Enterprise desal fixed charge $6,395,631. This appropriation will allow the Water Department to pay for the fiscal year 2016 desal fixed charges as obligated by contract in a home rule petition. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Lawrence Raleigh, DPW Commissioner. Councilors, um, as you also know, um, Councilor Rodriguez is not here uh, this evening, nor is Councilor DiNapoli or Councilor Cruz, but Councilor Rodriguez is one of the uh, proponents to um, uh, taking the appropriation um, away from and eliminating it from the uh, budget when we pass the budget in, uh, in June. So um, also we're still in discussions with um, Aquaria and them not being present here this evening as, as well. So. I don't know what um, steps should you want to take. I'd but, like um, to take a motion to postpone to September's meeting, if I may. Motion. I'll second that motion. Motion been made and second that we on the po motion. postpone this until September's finance meeting on the motion, Councilor Moynihan. Yeah, can we get Council? I mean, yeah, Councilor. Uh, Mr. Condon up here? Sure. Council Condon. No, you don't <laughs> want to do that. Mr. Condon? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I deserve promotion, uh, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Is there an issue if we don't get this appropriation in at a certain time? Well, we'll be, um, in my opinion, we'll be operating under the good graces, of, expecting the good graces of Aquaria uh, to uh, not take any action against the city while this matter is, is pending. I, I think um, you may want to get the opinion of the law department as well, but my opinion, we owe the money. I think the council knows we owe the money. The question is the timing of it. We get billed monthly, um, and there is an interest penalty uh, if we don't pay. I'm hopeful, on the other hand, that uh, we've granted them an extension this evening, that with a phone call or a conversation, we can just operate in each other's good graces for a period of time until this gets resolved. At some point, we'll have to pay the money. Okay. So they've obviously <coughs> not shown surprise again. So um, <laughs> if we just let this go f till September, you don't think there's going to be an issue? I, I hope that. I mean, I can't promise it. It's not within my power to, to make the commitment, but I would make the effort to say let's, let's just operate in good graces with each other for a period of time to the end of the month of September. <coughs> it's not a huge amount of money. I mean, it's not insignificant, but the penalty that we would incur isn't a huge amount of money by being late, and they'd have to spend money to, to enforce it. So I'd okay. say let's, uh, let's roll the dice a little bit, uh, but I wouldn't want to go beyond September. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you thank you, Mr. Conan. Any other, any other questions, um, 
on the postponement until our next uh, finance meeting, which would be in September. All in favor of that? Opposed? That's been postponed to the next uh, meeting, uh, finance meeting in September, Madam Clerk. Next uh, item. Order appropriation $20,000 from the Massachusetts Department of Highway VIA O'Colony Planning Council's Fiscal Year 15 Sustained Traffic Enforcement Program for Pedestrian Bicycle Safety Grant to the City of Brockton Police Department Fiscal Year 15 Traffic Enforcement Grant Fund. <coughs> Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Police Chief. Good evening, Mayor. So, Council, is this uh, particular grant is a partnership with O'Colony Planning Council? Uh, it uh, is directly working with MassDOT, that's where the money is coming from, and uh, it, it's one of many initiatives coming out of the work we've been doing with MassDOT and other agencies around pedestrian and bicycle safety. So the good news is we did get this grant last year, but only for 10000 and they've agreed to double the amount to 20000 this year. The, the title of the grant fund that it comes from is a little confusing. It gives the impression that this money is for traffic enforcement. Uh, but it's actually not. It pays for uh, police officers to be out uh, doing awareness and education with pedestrians and bicyclists regarding uh, any unsafe practices they may be engaging in. So uh, police officers uh, with the grant, uh, we look at and determine certain areas that have been high crash areas for both pedestrian and bicycle accidents with motor vehicles target those areas. The police officers would then watch that area and proactively stop people who are walking or riding their bikes if they uh, see that they're engaging in anything that could possibly be a dangerous uh, uh, habit, or I don't know what the right word is I'm looking for, that the way that they're walking as a pedestrian or the manner in which they're riding their bicycle may not be safe. Uh, the officers are stopping them, but it's not an enforcement. It's awareness and education. They have a conversation with them, and they give them a, a, a brochure, a pamphlet regarding uh, those safety issues. So, uh, you know, we're, we're very happy that MassDOT increased the funding for this grant this year, um, and uh, there is no match from the city. Questions, councilors? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Councilor Stewart. Uh, Mr. Mayor, so I'm assuming we're targeting residents because I, for my recollection many of those past incidents were um, at the fault of the pedestrian and not the driver. I mean not residents. We're looking at pedestrians because in many cases they were culpable in those accidents and not the driver, correct? Right. This, the, the intent of the grant is to create education and awareness around safe practices for pedestrians and bicyclists. It's not actually targeting the drivers of cars. It's targeting pedestrians and bicyclists in creating education awareness around safe practices. Sure. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Any other questions? It's not, it's not a punitive type of thing. It's an, it's, it's an educational, it's a friendly conversation and a brochure. Councilor yeah, Sullivan. I'm going to make a favorable recommendation back to the full council. Second. Motion made and second to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. Favorable recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number 10. Order appropriation $8,315.79 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, EOP Supplement, CSI, Local Action Re Partner Research Grant <coughs> Fund. These grant funds will be used to pay for evaluation efforts of the work being done under the Shannon Grant. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Police Chief. So, Councilors, items. Uh, Items 10 and 11 are related. They're both related to our Shannon grant money. And uh, this is actually good news. This is restoring cuts that had been made earlier in the year. So our Shannon grant money had been cut by the administration earlier in the year and has subsequently been restored. So with the Shannon grant, it's a very strict requirement of the Shannon grant that you have to have, um, uh, you have to have an independent outside evaluation as to um, how you're spending the Shannon grant money. So that's item number 10 to restore the piece of money for the outside consultant. And then number 11 is actually restoring uh, $54,800 to the actual Shannon grant funds. Uh, the vast majority of that was targeting uh, summer work programs uh, around Shannon eligible uh, young adults um, uh, because that was the part 
that had been cut when we, when we sustained the cuts. We basically put back what we had lost with getting the funding back. Questions, councils, <coughs> Council Bonds? Um, I, I know that she's not <coughs> one of the invited guests, but the police grants administrator is here. Could I ask her a question? Sure. sure. We, we brought her on purpose, oh, okay. just in case. Good evening. Um, the mayor just indicated that this is pretty much restorative funds for the, the program that we had. The evaluation, is that something that's built into the program in, in past years, or is this something new now that it's Every been? Every year that we've had Shannon, this is the ninth year, there's okay. nine evaluations. Okay, so it's just a routine evaluation. Correct. It's not, you know, like a, a check and balance or something or some kind of... No, um, it's an evaluation of the efforts that are going on, so it's not a okay. budgetary thing. It's on programmatic activity. Okay, okay, but it's not like a reflection that we're doing something inappropriate. Uh, I hope not. No, no, okay. <laughs> no not at okay. all. Not at all. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council. Any other questions? Yes, I was wondering, Council. Mrs. Thibault, how are you? I'm well, very well, Council. How are you? Good. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. You do me. a great job, and we really appreciate everything you. you do. I know everyone does. Appreciate um, your kind words. Those, um, those reviews, those nine reviews of the program, uh, yep. could you email them? Like, could you email them to me? I'm I wondering. can. I there would love to read them. You know. they, they can be done anytime you would like. Great, I'll shoot you an email. We have PowerPoints. We have all types cool. of wonderful, I mean, they're, they're done very professionally. So we're happy to share them with anyone. So when Mayor Carpenter said that the funding that we're getting restored is actually going to um, kind of pay back what the city's already expended. So when those 9C cuts came down and the Shannon grant was cut, you guys didn't pare back some of your summer activities? You went No, forward? what happened, the, it's timing. So okay. when Governor Deval Patrick left, he <clears> awarded <throat> us a certain amount of money. Baker came in and hit us with 9C cuts. Right. That's the restoring of the 9C. So okay, so you have enough money that you could flex it throughout the year? Is that correct. what you Well, we had, to, we had to submit a whole new budget application, um, re reposition all our funds. Oh. And then we had to do that again, which is this pool of money okay. uh, to pay for and to you know, take care of the other new expenses, which we, we threw into um, summer jobs for kids. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council. Any other questions? I'm going to make a favorable recommendation back to the full council. Second. Motion been made and seconded and sent back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. Favorable recommendation. Thank, Thank you. you Great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Madam Clerk? Order appropriation $54,863.79 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, EOPS Fiscal Year 2015, Shannon Community Safety Initiative Supplement Grant to the City of Brockton Police Department, Shannon Community Safety Initiative Supplement Grant Fund for police overtime, summer jobs for Shannon youth and programming for Shannon youth who are case managed by Old Colony Y staff. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Police Chief. Motion recommend favorably. Second. Second. On the motion. On the motion, Councilor Sullivan. Mr. Chairman, I just had a quick question for the mayor. If I yes. Could. Mr. Mayor, good evening. Good evening, Councilor. Relative to the, uh, the line item talking about police overtime, um, I just I wanted to know because, again, in the most recent budget, again, the, the, the chief wanted 800000 You rec recommended 900000 and we approved 900000 so out of that 54 and change. Michelle to answer that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Michelle needs to answer that. Okay. I was trying to cover that in my explanation, but let Michelle give you the specifics. That yeah, that'd be great. The vast majority of this For money went to the job. summer job yep. program. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, counselors. Um, regarding the overtime, that's very specific. It's used for gang suppression. Um, and of that, 54,000. Eight thousand three hundred and sixty seven will be used for overtime. Eight thousand out of the fifty four. Correct. Okay. That answers my question. Thank you, ma'am. Thank welcome. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Dubois. Um I motion to recommend favorably. Second. Okay. Thank Very you. Good. Motion was made and second to send back to the full city council. All in favor. Opposed goes back to the full city council favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Uh, President. Councilor Dubois. I know that we're coming up on thirteen, right? Uh, number 12. Ah, okay, wait a minute. Nope, I'm back off. I'm done. Sorry, I'm going to wait till 13. Thank you. Okay. I apologize. Number 12, Madam Clerk. Order that the Department of Planning and Economic Development is hereby authorized to accept and expend the 7500 grant from the Massachusetts Historical Commission 2015 Survey and Planning Grant Program for the Downtown Brockton 
Preservation Project invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, and Robert May, Director, Planning Department. Good evening, Mr. May. How are you? Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Council. Go right ahead. Anything you'd oh, like I'm to Oh, I'm sorry. Spaced out. Um, we have applied for and received <coughs> a uh, planning grant from the Massachusetts Historical uh, Commission um, to prepare what we're calling a uh, historic resource book for uh, several properties in, in downtown Brockton. We have uh, identified uh, 25 properties in which we'll go through and do some survey work and gather additional information um, that will be available to the property owners or to people who are interested in developing those properties to talk about the historic aspects of the building, what materials that are currently at the site are historic, what is not, how could those be changed to become more historic, and then, of course, what uh, <coughs> qualifies for um, state uh, tax credits or other um, uh, funding programs that the state has to offer. We'll also take another look, a, a deeper dive on five other properties where we'll go in and do um, what we're calling a fit analysis. So we basically take the envelope of the building, we work with an architect and design firm to figure out how the vacant upper floors could be reutilized, whether for commercial or recreational or, or residential use. I'm sorry. We then use that again to the property owners or people who are interested in redeveloping those properties to show them how they could take advantage of the asset that they have now and to uh, restore it and to get more economic value out of that. Very good. Councillor uh, Stewart. Mr. May, uh, thank yes, you for sir. being here today. So does to, uh, the properties in the city that are some of the first wired buildings, are they on your list of uh, properties that will be included in this survey and planning project? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we will be working primarily in the downtown area, so we'll be looking at um, all of the properties that are what we call the Edison District, uh, including several of the properties that are on the National Register right now but are not on a state or local register. Got it. So some of the homes on Green Street. And, and then the, other, the second question is, um, so I have this belief, which is totally unfounded, but a strong belief, that if um, folks are willing to travel outside of Boston to go to Plymouth because of Plymouth Rock. Uh, people would be willing to travel to Brockton to see the first wired homes by Edison or whatever. How do we, um, in, in a planning process, how do we verify that that kind of demand could exist? Is that, is that kind of surveying part of the work you guys are doing, like public willingness to travel a certain distance for a particular landmark or something like that or no? That's a very interesting question. Um, I was just at the Mass Preservation Conference this Friday in Worcester um, that dealt with uh, identifying and surveying uh, markets that could be coming to your area. And while a lot of people look at, at uh, foreign markets, there is a group of m Bay Staters who don't know a lot about our community or about you know the Commonwealth in, in particular. And so a lot of communities are starting to develop programs to bring people, local people, back into their own community. So we're marketing to Brockton, to Plymouth County residents, to, to Greater Boston. Um, I also have <coughs> somewhere deep in my heart a plan uh, when I can get to it. I think it would be very interesting to have an application that we work with um, the uh, uh, Plymouth County Tourism. We have a lot of day trippers that come down to see the rock and it literally is a rock and sorry I'm not I'm on camera so I can't. <laughs> it's a rock. Um, <laughs> it, but you know how do you get from the rock to Rocky and how do we create an online app that will take people from Plymouth through some of the very interesting communities that we have here, uh, historic communities uh, that are to the east of us and eventually end up uh, here in Brockton with the Rocky Marciano uh, Trail and, and downtown Brockton. So there's a, that kernel is poking in my head That's right great. now. Well, keep me posted on what develops uh, in that area because I think it's really exciting. Okay, thank you, Mr. Interesting idea. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank Mr. Chairperson. Council Bonds. Yes. Thank you, um, Mr. May. In the material that you sent, uh, uh, the proposal, it said that it indicates that there were, were previous surveys done. Is yeah. that available, or where uh, did they yes. go with that? Councilor, we have uh, received previous survey grants. All of those um, are available online. Um, the, the finished products are available at the Mass Historic 
um, uh, website, okay. and it's the municipal. And Ms. I'll get you a link and send it to you. But it, okay. it's it's an it's a collection of all across the Commonwealth. You can look uh, for specific uh, surveys on areas, on uh, particular buildings, on um, structures, uh, and historic artifacts. So a lot of the buildings have been surveyed here uh, in, in Brockton. Mm -hmm. You know, not just downtown, but all over the city. Right. And uh, we are going to be working with um, Mass Historic. They believe they have some funding available from FEMA, of all places, um, to uh, document historic properties that haven't been surveyed already in case there is another, another natural disaster like Hurricane Sandy where some of these properties might be affected. They want to have a baseline. And so what we've been working with them is to document the shoe barren properties um, and those original historic homes that are to the west of, uh, of downtown, to the west of, of the Montello district, um, and the west of the Campello district, the, those, in mm -hmm. those residential communities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Council. And where they might exist elsewhere. Oh, Any I other? actually did have one more. Ooh, is it too late? Go ahead. No. I'm so sorry. Too late. Um, <laughs> in the third, the third paragraph, it mentioned something about um, that the mayor would be authorized to take such other actions. What, what other actions are, are you anticipating? What, what does that mean? Well, besides the mayor is going to have to sign the grant agreement. Okay. Um, Clerical and, stuff. And allow us to go out with an RFP uh, through the purchasing department, uh, procurement department to secure a, um, a consultant. To, and that, so that's what we were talking about. Okay. But it's not kind of subject to the approval of the mayor situation with, with these properties or the work that needs to be done or any recommendations we're, we're that come from all the survey? Of that basically in our, okay. in, our, in our department. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Council? Yes, thank, thank you, sir. You. Council Sullivan, did you I make a favorable recommendation back to full council? Oh, second. Just one second. second. On the motion, Council Monahan. Will you be looking into the birthplace of uh, birthplace of Council Stadinsky, just you know, 1800s? <laughs> I, I, I understand that's very historic. <laughs> okay. Yes. Just, I just want to make sure that was going to be included. Thank you. <laughs> With the nativity. Welcome. <laughs> Motion been made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council favor recommendation. Mr. Thank President, you, Ms. Council Dubois. I'm unsure if I'm going to get a second on this, but I'm going to explain it. And if I get a second, great. And if I don't, so be it. Okay. I am not ready to vote on this like, gigantic bonding capacity. Um, and I'd like more time to look into <coughs> all the items except for 14, which is a ladder truck. Um, and so I'm going to make a motion that we take item number 13, 15, 16, 17, 18 and 19 collectively and, and uh, postpone them till September's meeting. Motion has been made. Do I have a second? I'll second for voting purposes. Motion has been made and seconded that we're going to take items number 13, 15, 16, 17, 18 and 19 and postpone to the next uh, FinCon meeting in September. Mr. Chairman. Uh, motion, Councilor Stewart. Uh, can I recommend either having the CFL explain the ramifications of delay, or can we do a quick research to figure this out? There's a lot of information here to vote um, for me. Do you, do that would be fine with me. That'd be wonderful. Yeah, I, I don't think that there's a problem with that. I mean, it, it makes it makes sense. And, and just keep in mind, uh, Councilors, as, as I said, uh, chances are I'm going to move that finance meeting up in September, so we could be could be meeting the Tuesday after Labor Day, so it's not like it would be in the back end of September because of some holidays in the primary coming at us. So go ahead, Mr. Condon. I think uh, the answer to that question is it depends upon the specific order, and I'll tell you a little bit why I, why I say that. Go ahead. I understand the reason for looking to act on the, on the ladder truck tonight. That's a longstanding need. I think with respect to some of the other items, the vehicles uh, for the DPW, uh, the police cruisers, even though I think we all acknowledge there's a, there's a need, I think a postponement there would not be a particular problem. I think also for the planning department equipment, it wouldn't be a particular problem. In the case of the water system improvements and the sewer system improvements, I think uh, the, there are two issues there that have me concerned. Uh, on the water side, in the um, uh, the, one, of the, one of the projects anticipated to be undertaken is one that we're under a consent decree at the moment with um, respect to Torrey Street. 
I think uh, the other one has to do with a problem which we may face, and I don't know how long we have to act on it. You have to ask the DPW department uh, and their consulting engineers here tonight as well. But with respect to the tw Silver Lake treatment plant, there is a um, uh, structure where the treated water gets sent to, which has some problems where if we don't act on it in some time, uh, we have the risk of it uh, depriving us of the use of the treatment plant. And I don't know if that's a matter of urgency over the next 60 days or, or a matter of urgency over, the, over a little bit longer time. But we will have to take action on that. That's about $4.8 I don't know that a one-month delay is significant in that respect. I just want to let you know that. In the case of the sewer projects and also perhaps on the water, and I think I'd have to ask uh, for Camp Dresser on this, there is a benefit to acting in time to get into a funding cycle with the state revolving loan fund where we get a assistance on our borrowing cost. And that's a cycle which has an annual element to it. I think the sewer projects are already qualified, so they're looking for an authorization to be in their hands this fall. I don't know if the water ones are uh, qualified that or not. So by your leave, I'd ask uh, CDM to come up and provide some clarification on that. Because, because except for those projects, I don't see a big problem with, with postponing, uh, as the council has asked. Does anyone have any uh, problem with that to have them? No. Yep, they want to come up. Good evening. Ian Mead with CDM Smith, working supporting uh, Commissioner Rowley. The Good evening. How are you? Uh, thank you for having us. Um, is there a particular order you'd like me to take these in or specific questions to each order that would be most helpful? Well, I, I think first off, I think is the, uh, the one that's most important in, in regards to the water improvements. I think that's what uh, our CFO was uh, referring to, and I think that's the most important one right there before us. So uh, that being said, he can show you he's got the agenda there. Maybe yep. you want to talk about that one, and then we yes. can go from. Okay, sir. Yep. Um, order 16 uh, is the 3.8 million, which, as the CFO mentioned, references a project that the city is under an order to complete through the Mass Department of Environmental Protection, which will address a replacement to, uh, water main on Torrey Street. Um, as the CFO mentioned, there is a funding cycle through the DEP, which qualifies the city for low interest loan as well as a portion of principal forgiveness through the loan. Um, and there is a deadline of October 15th, 2015 to submit uh, design documents, plans and specifications to the state in order to maintain that qualification. Um, and the uh, consent order requires that the construction of that project be completed in 2016, which is the timeline that that project currently is on, uh, including accounting for the October 15th deadline. Order number 17. Excuse me. Um, I would like to request um, Councillor Sullivan to withdraw his second, and I'll withdraw my motion, and then we can just move forward individually because it seems like there seems to be some dates that we should that handle we need them. To yeah, yeah, at I, least uh, certain uh, ones. I pulled back my second on the motion. Okay. And I withdraw my motion to okay, collectively so, take so, it. Out. So the motion that was made has been uh, withdrawn, and uh, we're just going to go back, and we will start with order uh, number 13, and we'll take it from there. Right, Councillors? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Order that the sum of 400000 is appropriated to pay costs of a stormwater management planning, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the Treasurer, with the approval of the Mayor, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Chapter 44 and or Chapter 29C of the General Laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the City. The invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, and Chief Financial Officer, Martin S. Brophy, Treasurer, Tax Collector, Lawrence Riley, DPW Commissioner, Richard Manley, Jr., Locke, Lord Edwards. Good evening, Mr. Condon. Okay, Councilors. So this first one, I think, has to do with um, uh, in, over the next few years, the city is going to be forced to take action to comply with EPA requirements for stormwater management. And this is the first step. We basically need to begin to take a look at what the issues are that we're facing and develop a plan to begin to move into compliance. Uh, if you um, approve this loan order, it will be paid for and um, planning uh, money is allowed to be borrowed for if, uh, if it's followed up with actual work. It's rolled into the cost of the actual work, but if it doesn't, you know, we have to pay it over a shorter cycle. But the purpose of the loan is to uh, pay for a uh, plan to begin to address the stormwater management. Now, this particular one would be paid for by general fund revenues, which is why the uh, comment is in my certification letter. 
with respect to a certification which is conditional upon obtaining a debt exclusion. If you want, I'll take a minute about that if you, if you don't object. Basically, whenever uh, the city has borrowed in the past, uh, almost going back to 2000, I've looked to see my certification letters, I write, I write a conditional certification. There are a couple of reasons for that. One, this is a small amount of money, uh, so it, it's, it's not as pertinent to here because it's $400,000, not an awful lot of money in any given year. But basically what you're looking to do is to uh, burden the general fund with an expenditure once the bond is issued over a period of time. And you're asking for, in, uh, in case we do that, can the chief financial officer say that in doing it, you're not going to have some impact on the ability of the city to continue to provide the level of services it's providing today. Well, the only way you could be certain on a five-year or a 20-year commitment would be to say, we're going to put the money in place to actually pay for the cost of that bond. So that's what the certification pertains to it, saying to be certain that you're not going to have an impact on services, you can put a uh, question in front of the voters. They can say yeah or no. And if they say yes, then you know for sure you're going to have the money to pay for that bond. And anything else that happens in the budget is independent of that because you've got the revenues to pay for it. So that's what my certification means on, on basically all of these. Obviously, the consequence is greater the larger the amount of borrowing. But I think we need to do the project in time. We're going to be forced to do it. Mm -hmm. If we don't get moving, then we'll be in negotiations with the uh, EPA over some kind of consent decree. But that's the first one. Council Dubois. Thank you. Um, how is the city standing with our, our bond ratio, like our percentage? What do we have bonded out right now? Uh, I, I don't know the number of uh, outstanding debt issuance off the, off the top of my head. The treasurer may have that. But Could uh, you get us, like a, the, my fellow councillors and I, some kind of breakdown before, next, before we vote on these bonds finally, generally? Yes, of can. Like where we stand? Because yes. what is the amount that um, the bond rating agencies don't want you to go over? Isn't there a certain well, we percentage? Don't, we don't have a limit with respect to the bond rating agency. The uh, agency looks at the city's credit in terms of debt issuance as being standard. We aren't outside the norm for a city of our size uh, or and of our the budget. benchmarking by I'm for sorry? healthy healthy bond rating like a healthy bond amount for a city what's the benchmark to know that you're not no, over it would normally bonding. be a percent we're restricted by statute yeah. to a percentage of our our, um, our um, assessed values and there's, a, there's a double limit um, but we're not close to either the, the inside or outside the debt Great. limit. Could you and give us information about that in your email? Too? I will get you that. And Mark, then we'll I don't be want to give it off educated. the top of my head. I don't yeah. want to give it off the top of my head. But I will get you that before Monday night. And why would we bond? How, how many years is this $400,000 for? Well, how many years we, will we be bonding if it out? If you simply issue a bond for planning, I think it's for five years. If you roll it into the actual construction work, if we get to that point, it would be for the life of the construction work and you can get rolled into that. So, but this, there's no funds. Um, being asked for tonight that's for the construction work, right? None. None. No, so plan. you would bond out the 400000 <laughs> then when the construction work comes in, roll that into the we that bond? The would this 400000 We would probably do a short-term borrowing, a bond anticipation note, which would have a term coming due, and we could either roll it again or we could issue at that time. Or if we were close to doing construction work, we could ask the City Council's authority to borrow for the construction work, and that bond anticipation note could then be rolled into the longer debt. I just don't remember bonding this small amount or for this type of service. Well, we in have the in the past for, uh, for, for planning projects for longer term construction. We've done it in the past for school projects. I don't recall off the top of my head if we've done it for DPW water and sewer projects. I wouldn't be surprised, but I can't say. I don't sure. remember, but that's, that's interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Councilor Bond? Uh, yes. Is there any, uh, I guess, estimated time when these new EPA requirements are going to be coming out? When uh, before the end of the year. Oh, okay. And then when Mr. Condon mentioned something about if we don't do it voluntarily, then we'd be forced. What, what does that look like? Well, there, the city is already... There is a general stormwater permit that exists for all municipalities. Technically, it expired in 2008. Mm -hmm. And what we've been waiting for is the next round of renewal of that uh, permit, that general permit. Mm -hmm. um, in 2010, it was issued in draft form, and it included many onerous requirements, and municipalities across the state protested. EPA pulled it back. And they reissued it in 2014. and it has more flexibility and lower cost impacts built in. And um, the latest information from EPA is that that will be issued final uh, in September, excuse me, November or December of 2015. And it would be a five-year permit cycle. 
Okay. And in your review of our system, this is enough to, to make sure that we're compliant? Yes, the city, it's important to note the city has been in compliance with the existing permit. Okay. But because of the new, um, there are some new requirements under this new permit related to management of the system, uh, data, testing that has to be done within the system mm -hmm. uh, to ensure water quality of the receiving waters, that, um, that that would be sufficient to get that work done. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor. <clears throat> Any other questions, Councilors, in regards to this particular item? Motion. motion recommend favor. Second. second. Motion was made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. Favor recommendation. Madam Clerk, item number 14. Order that the sum of 1,200,000 is appropriated to pay costs of purchasing a new fire ladder truck <coughs> and for payment of all costs incidental and related thereto and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow 1,200,000 under and pursuant to General Law Chapter 44, <coughs> Section 7-9 of the General Laws or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the city. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, Martin S. Brophy, Treasurer, Tax Collector, Michael Williams, Fire Chief, and Richard Manley, Jr., Lock, Lord Edwards. Well, Councilors, I think this is uh, an issue which has been uh, discussed uh, in Council Chambers for at least a year and a half. Um, I think uh, we're all in agreement that we need to do something to replace that truck. Uh, it isn't serviceable on a daily basis. Uh, and we're, um, uh, I just don't think it's wise to continue to operate this way. We did look at the cost of uh, obtaining a, a lease for the truck. We'd save a little bit of money because uh, municipal borrowing rates are lower, I think, than leasing costs. We'd probably be better off by borrowing the money, especially if we're going to be incurring costs for going to uh, the bond market for a bunch of other issues. Uh, for, for simply the truck, I'm not certain I would have said do it that way, but this, at this point I do think so. Uh, this would be a general obligation bond. It would be paid for by the general fund's uh, revenues. The annual imp I think the, uh, the term of a purchase of a piece of equipment like this I think is dependent upon the, uh, the kind of equipment. This, this particular truck I think might be qualified for 10 years or more of, uh, of repayment because it's a, an apparatus that has a long, a long useful life. You know, they often last for 20 years. Uh, I also would like to note, I mean, uh, the fire chief is here to answer your questions if you have any as to the specific need here and how we would use it. And also the council invited uh, Rick Manley from um, our bond council firm. Uh, uh, Lord Locke and Edwards, and um, he's here tonight also to answer any questions. If you have them with respect to the nature of this, uh, the orders that have been in front of you and the certification that I have to provide. Thank you, Mr. Condon. Any uh, Council Dubois? I'm wondering if we could have um, Mr. Manley come up and just give us a brief overview of um, what he thinks we should know about what is happening this evening. Can you do that for us? Good evening, Councillors. Good evening. Uh, well, uh, I guess what I, can, what I can tell you is that in our, in our uh, role as uh, council to the city with regard to bonds, uh, it, it's our function to put together the votes, uh, the orders that you see from time to time that we prepare for the city, and then uh, we follow through the proceedings to figure out uh, whether or not all appropriate procedures have been followed so that we can render an opinion to the bond market, the purchasers of the bonds, uh, so that they can feel comfortable that uh, you know, sort of a third party has looked over the procedures taken by council and uh, the mayor to uh, to authorize the debt properly, that it's an enforceable obligation of the city. So that's sort of the beginning, the middle, and the end of the of the activities that we are engage in. So uh, from that perspective, we we don't really have a dog in the hunt about the merits of a particular uh, a project uh, under consideration. Uh, that, that's just not something within our What our merits purview. do you judge your, your opinion on then? I'm just wondering, like, do you give pros and cons when you're making your recommendation or what, what, what kind of um, consultation do you provide? Oh, well, the, the work that we do uh, surrounds, you know, uh, uh, review of the state law and local ordinances as they pertain to the approval of debt, <coughs> things that you're allowed to borrow for and for how long those borrowings can be structured and then assisting the city and its financial advisor when it goes to the bond market and actually sells the, uh, sells the debt to the public. Uh, typically what happens is the, uh, the debt of the, uh, of the city is sold on a competitive basis. So we work with the uh, city to compile disclosure as it relates to the sale of the bonds uh, and then assist in the conduct of the marketing of the of oversight of the marketing of the bonds uh, and, you know, making sure that the competitive sale goes off all right. 
and then documentation. Uh, a big piece of what we do also is to, uh, is to go through the elements of the federal tax code as it pertains to the uh, ability of the city to issue tax exempt bonds, uh, which is typically the best, uh, the best uh, result in terms of affordability. Uh, <clears throat> but unfortunately, the, uh, the tax code is somewhat involved with regard to uh, the ability to issue tax exempt bonds for sort of the wide range of things that municipalities uh, you know, often want to get involved with. So we have to kind of work hard to be sure that, uh, and we give an opinion to the buyer of the bonds, that the bonds are tax exempt in appropriate cases. Do you, um, how long has your relationship with the city been intact? Like how long have you been working with the city just generally, your company? Well, our firm, uh, Lock Lord, is, uh, is, 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 the name is new, uh, but, but my firm goes back to Palmer and Dodge, uh, which have been counsel to the city, I mean, I probably 50 years anyway. Right. Um, and then I have been on the city council 10 years, and I just don't remember bonding out um, like sewer and water infrastructure repair in the past. Um, do, you, do you regularly see this type of bonding from municipalities um, elsewhere in the state or people, different municipalities that hire you? For, for water and sewer infrastructure? Yeah. Oh, yes. At this level, this like $3 million level. Oh, oh yes, yes. Uh, uh, it, 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 there's a wide range depending on the, uh, you know, the nature and function of the facilities being either improved, repaired, or, or perhaps built from the, for the first time. But uh, oh yes, and, and we see it, uh, you know, in, in sort of a three to f three to four million dollar scale, all the way up to you know tens of millions of dollars. It it, uh, it happens a lot. Um, I think that from the point of view of of uh, a sort of public finance. Uh, theory or, or if you will that these are very long lived assets you know water and sewer in general if you're talking about the uh, you know the, the the guts of the system the pipes and so forth they usually, they usually last well beyond when the when the debt's paid off how long would the bond for water and sewer go out for like what would be the time range uh, the general laws permit uh, borrowing you know, for a lot longer than the market would be interested in in, uh, in borrowing. For example, certain uh, water uh, mains and, and things of that nature can go as long as 40 years. Uh, in the norm, most of them can go as long as 30 years uh, in terms of the repayment term. Uh, by and large, practically speaking, when you sell uh, debt to the marketplace, most of it's in the 20-year range. That tends to be where the most interest uh, lies in terms of the buyers of bonds. But uh, for transactions that are, uh, you know, up to 30 years, it's not unusual to sell bonds competitively like that. And with, with long-term infrastructure like water and sewer, it's very common. Uh, the average life of a building, for example, f uh, under the tax code is treated as, say, 50 years. And so it's not unusual even in the building context, uh, large school projects, for example, to go uh, up to 25 anyway. We see well, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Uh, getting back to this particular this particular item here, I, I know we heard from Mr. Conner that Chief Williams is here. If he wants to come up and uh, add anything in regards to this, I know that uh, you weren't chief at that particular point in time when this was to be discussed. But I, I apologize. This the last council meeting when this got forwarded, I was on vacation, so I, I apologize for that. But uh, this is a continuous need that we've been living with uh, for almost two years now. So we're hoping to look forward uh, to purchasing the new ladder truck. Any other Motion questions? Motion to recommend favorably. Second. Okay. Motion to be made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you Chief. Know. Mr. Condon, uh, item number 15. Order that the sum of $1,840,000 is appropriated to pay costs to various sewer system improvements, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the Treasurer, with approval of the Mayor, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Chapter 44 and or Chapter 29C of the General Laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the City. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, Martin S. Profi, Treasurer, Tax Collector, Lawrence Riley, DPW Commissioner, Richard Manley, Jr., Locke, Lord Edwards. Okay, Councillors, uh, this particular one is for, uh, a, this also would be a general obligation bond if it's approved by the City Council, but the intent would be, even though it's a general obligation bond, to have the sewer revenues pay for the cost of it. Um, 
in, in answer to your question earlier, Councillor Dubois, in uh, the uh, past 10 years, probably beginning maybe just before you came on the council, the city undertook a project for uh, a major reconstruction of our wastewater treatment plant and sewer infrastructure, including some studies that were included at the, at the beginning of all of that for well over $100 million. We obtained a fair amount of benefit in terms of the capacity of the system, uh, problems we were having with the system, but this particular uh, uh, request we we'll begin to renew our efforts to make sure that the sewer system where it needs to be uh, taken care of has the work done that uh, absolutely has to be done. I don't know where we stand on the uh, SRF uh, cycle. Same deadline, October. Okay, so we're looking to get in for the October time frame. At the moment, I think my certification here was, was a little bit different. At the moment, the sewer revenues and rates are adequate to take care of its needs. Um, but periodically you're going to have to do something because costs increase and you're going to be probably out for 20 or 30 years as Attorney Manley said on this bond so periodically the City Council will have to, it's in your power to raise the rates as the costs go up in order to make sure that the rates continue to be adequate on a periodic basis you'll have to address that uh, that requirement but there isn't an immediate need to raise the sewer rates. So my certification just says keep up with the cost increases. Thank you, Mr. Conn. Uh, Council Sullivan. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Conn. Mm -hmm. um, just, just to kind of piggyback that during the uh, the budget, I, I agree with you. I mean, we need to do something. We, I mean, we we had a wake up call, so we need to do something. And um, I asked during the budget cycle about bonding out, and I believe your response at that time was you you agreed with the the principal, and we can amortize and all that fun stuff. We get a good rate, but you also indicated that you thought that raising the rates would really be contingent. They should actually be almost reciprocal. You, you'd bond it out, but it would be, you know, verified relative to the increase. Has that tune changed now? No, I, I think on the sewer fund, my, my position is, a, is the same as it has been. Your, your, um, your rate adequacy is being squeezed because the rates have been, I think, the same for about five or six years, and they were, they were sufficient to allow us to do a lot of work. Uh, it's been squeezed. Uh, when you see the retained earnings that come out of this year's operations that you'll see next March, you'll see that, you know, there's a reduction there, and that means you can't do as much in terms of capital spending for cash. This one here, um, my feeling hasn't changed. In the water department, it's a much different question, and that's where the certification is a, is a, lot, uh, a lot different. In this one, this particular department, I think just will be attentive need to look at it, make certain that we don't, unless we have something unanticipated, that we don't fall behind on it, and on a periodic basis make sure they're adjusted so that the cost of this particular debt service will be borne not just for the year in two or three in advance, but for the life of the bond. Oh, oh, oh extend it out. That's right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Connor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Any other questions? Uh, Councilors? Motion to in favor, Again. The motion. motion made and seconded and sent back to the full city council. All in favor? On the motion. On the motion, council. Sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, what, is this, what is this $1.8 million exactly going to pay for? It's for uh, infrastructure repair to the uh, collection system underground. It's not for the treatment plant, but Where? still. Uh, I, I have to ask the uh, DBW commissioner the specific section he intends to work on. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Hi. Mr. Council, that's Mr. Um, various locations all over the city. When we identify that we have a problem area, we go in, <coughs> excuse me, TV it and see what the problem is. What it is, is we, we just, we're continuing to tighten up our system, less water to treat. Right. Before next week, could you email the council a list of where you, I mean, I'm not going to hold you to it and go out and inspect the hole. I, I can I, tell you what we're doing now, and, and, and then we're identifying as we go now, we're doing a lot of TVing. How do you know it's going to be 1.8 million then? That's what I'm saying. Like one, one, one million eight hundred and forty thousand. Well, I mean, it's just such a We're going to do as much work number. as we can with that 1.8. It could be more. It will never be less. When will you think you'll know? Um, like, what is your plan? So you're going to get this 1.8 million, and you're going to expend it over a certain what amount of time? It'll, it'll be over the over one year. Over one year. Yes. When will you get your plan together of what sites you're going to be fixing? Well, we're, with we're starting to put it all together now. Yeah. I should have it. I don't know, a couple months. Yeah. We have the October yeah. So I, I, I could have it in a couple months for you. Exactly where the locations where we're going to work. All right. Could you could you send that along to us once you get it done? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Council. So uh, motion was made and seconded to send back to the full City Council. All in favor. Pose goes back to the full city council favorable recommendation. Thank you. Item uh, number 16.
Order that the sum of three million eight hundred ten thousand is appropriated to pay costs of improvements to the various water mains, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that they meet the appropriation. The treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow said am amount under pursuant to Chapter 44 and or Chapter 29C of the general laws or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes to the city. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Martin S. Brophy, Treasurer, Tax Collector, Lawrence Raleigh, DPW Commissioner, Richard Manley, Jr., Lock, Lord Edwards. Good evening, Mr. Condon. Good evening, Councillors. Uh, this is the first of two borrowing requests, uh, authorization requests that relate to the Water uh, Enterprise Fund. Um, the first of these I don't think is any surprise to you. I think the order uh, was hoping that for $3.8 million we might be able to get more than the one, one uh, section of uh, the system accomplished. I, I'm being told that probably we won't. But the $3.8 million will certainly accomplish the need to take care of Tory Street. We're under a consent decree and we need to begin work. I was hoping we might be able to squeeze Tory, I mean, uh, uh, Tina Ab in as well. I'm told probably not. That's probably too much. We may need to come back on that. But we'll, uh, we'll see if we can't get both under it. Um, the Tory Street um, needs to be done because it's, uh, it's not compliant with our uh, regulations in terms of the water quality and we need to uh, replace the pipe to get into compliance. Uh, that also is on the SRF funding list and we're looking to get state assistance. I think it's already qualified, is it not? Yes. Yeah, it's already qualified, so we simply need to get our plans into them for October. Okay, great. Understandable. Have a recommendation back full council. Second. Second. Right, Motion's been made. So on the motion, Council Stewart. Just a quick uh, question for Mr. Condon. Um, so these are separate bonding projects because they're actually separate physical projects. They are separate physical projects. We also, um, when uh, the DPW commissioner and Ian Mead and I discussed them. Uh, in preparation for making a request for uh, Rick Manley to write the orders up for us. Uh, we decided that, um, especially with respect to these um, DPW projects, that it would be a good idea to separately identify them so that the council could weigh in on each of them on its own merits as opposed to putting a single request in for like eight or nine million dollars, say, for, for water projects and then force you to say yes to perhaps a project you didn't want to say. Uh, but these are separate projects. And I asked that question because um, I was uh, curious as to if they were bonded as one single item, would we not get a better interest rate because we're that it doesn't no, we, we will when we issue these bonds in all likelihood because of the timing on this. They'll all be combined as a multiple purpose bond, but it'll be a single issuance, maybe with different uh, different dates of maturity because of the, 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 the authorities for each. But we'll probably go to market one time or maybe twice. So the fact that you're authorizing separately doesn't mean that we can't issue combined. I see. Great. Thank you, Mr. Condon. Thank you, Mr. Chevers. Thank you, Council. Motion was made and seconded to send back to the full City Council. All in favor? Polls goes back to the full City Council. Favor recommendation. Thank you. Madam Clerk, uh, we have item number 17. Order that the sum of 4880000 is appropriated to pay costs of water improvements, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the Treasurer, with the approval of the Mayor, is authorized to borrow said amount under in pursuant to Chapter 44 and or Chapter 29C of the General Laws, or to pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the City. <coughs> Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Martin S. Brophy, Treasurer, Tax Collector, Lawrence Riley, DPW Commissioner, and Richard Manley, Jr., Lock, Lord Edwards. Well, Council, this particular one I think relates to the uh, wastewater, I'm sorry, the water treatment plant at Silver Lake. Um, I will mention, I didn't mention it on the last one, it applies to the last order as well. Both of these water orders have a condition on the CFO certification, which relate to the rate increase and my certification says you need, if you're going to be sure you're not having a problem in that budget, you need to enact the request for a rate increase that the Water Commission made so that it's fully implemented by 2017. Uh, not, not this moment, but start on it and get it fully implemented by 2017. This particular one, I think, has to do with a structure called Clearwater. Yeah. Clearwater? Why don't you describe it, Larry? Councilors, this is our um, standpipes uh, stand and the Clearwell down at the uh, water treatment plant. The Clearwell holds about a hundred, I mean, um, about a half a million gallons of water before it goes into the system. It's in disrepair. We've been kind of putting it off, but it, it does have to be repaired. That's one of the things under this, 4.8. The others is the tanks, the, the standpipes that Cary Hill and Irving have. Um, they have to be cleaned and they should be painted. And also the twin tanks up at the Avon Reservoir, the stucco is starting to fall off the tanks. So 
these tanks and the Clearwell are part of the infrastructure of the water system. We just, we just can't keep ignoring it. It has to be done. Second, second on, on the on motion. motion. Councilor Dubois. I, uh, uh, Mr. Kurt, um, Mr. Rowley, I just want to have a couple questions for uh, Mr. Condon. Okay. But thank you very much. You're so welcome. I just want to get my head around the certification. So in layperson's terms to the people at home, this certification is from the CFO, and when we, the city council makes expenditures because of the whole bankruptcy or what happened in the city years ago, we have you write a letter telling us what your opinion from your fiscal um, position is on, you know, our ability to afford this expense over the long term. And on this one you say you can afford it, City of Brockton, if you increase rates 30% by 2017 and you do the Prop 2.5 override or no? No. This one is really simply saying if you would raise the rates, the Water Commission has looked at the, their needs, including taking care of capital, and they've said that if you give them 30 percent, now they wanted it right away, I think we can defer some of the cost to, to make it less impactful in the, in the immediate future. But I think if we can get it in place by January 2017, my certification has to do with the rates, not with the uh, two and a half. Okay. And then I know that we're going to be moving on to another one, but I just have one more question. It kind of is about the certifications that you did give with the two, Prop 2.5 two override requirement. So you, you said gave the requirement that there be a Prop 2.5 override in order for you to say that the city can afford this expense. But the orders that came from the mayor's office didn't include the Prop 2.5 requirement. And therefore, if I'm understanding an email I got from our city council's attorney correctly, um, we don't have to listen to your Prop 2.5 override connection. And we, and we can just pass it. And then if the Prop 2.5 override gets put on the ballot, or if it doesn't get put on the ballot, and then if it does get put on the ballot and it gets killed, um, the expense is still made. Is that, is that, am I understanding this correctly? Yes, pretty much. The, the city uh, created through home rule petition this act which created my office and included in the requirements of the office is for the person who holds the title to look at any appropriation, but especially a borrowing appropriation which has a long-term commitment and make an assessment as to whether undertaking that project could be accomplished within the present revenues and continue to maintain the present services. And what I'm saying in each of these is I can't make that certification. However, if you take certain revenue actions to pay for the projects, I can. That's all I'm saying. When I make a certification like that that's got conditions, the only requirement is that it goes on the city council order so that everybody knows what is it that this guy said. There it is on the order. If the council chooses to pass the order, it has no obligation to take any other action and to pass the order. You're so a city councilor doesn't have to, to put yeah. forward a Prop 2.5 no. override request. Could that come from the mayor's office? It can come from the mayor's office, but it can't be undertaken unless the city council votes it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, councilor. The motion was made and seconded to send it back to the full city council. All in favor? Paul, goes back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. We go to item number 18, Madam Clerk. Order that the sum of 642000 is appropriated to pay costs of purchasing vehicles for the use of various city departments as set forth below vehicles including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto. One transit van for the public property department, 27000 Six marked and four unmarked police cruisers, 310000 One box truck for the school department, 78000 One bobcat for the school department, 47000 Two sander trucks for DPW, 180000 Total 642000 And that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow 642000 under and pursuant to General Law Chapter 44, Section 79 of the General Laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the city. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, Martin Brophy, Treasurer, Tax Collector, James Cassieri, Superintendent, Public Property, John Crowley, Police Chief, Aldo Petronio, Chief Budget Officer, Lawrence Raleigh, DPW Commissioner, Richard Manley, Junior, Lock Lord Edwards. Quite a list of invitees. Uh, basically, this particular um, request is being made because on the anticipation that the City Council will authorize some of these projects. Uh, we're, we're strapped for cash right now, as you know, and I don't think that if we don't get a borrowing authorization for these particular uh, 
vehicles that will probably be able to buy them in the very near future. So if we're going to go to market with other projects, then I thought it doesn't make, make sense to include this laundry list for mainly as police cruisers and, uh, and DPW trucks, a couple of other vehicles are thrown in. I made an itemized list so that you can see what's involved, and if you choose to strike any or all, that's, that's your discretion. But the thought was, this is a general obligation, general fund impact. It has the same certification as the other ones that were being paid by the general fund. The impact of this particular $640,000 is not a lot of money over the life of the borrowing. It gets us some of the most needed vehicles if you approve it immediately, but I wouldn't have come to you with a request for borrowing for this alone. And so that's. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilors, Council Bonds, and then Council Stewart. Oh, actually, I'll, I'll defer to Council Stewart. He started <coughs> first. Okay. No, no. That's very nice Wait, of you. Ladies first. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> Council Stanisky, do you have a second? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Councilor. Um, okay, so some of these uh, these vehicles, and uh, Councilor Dubois is not here, but she mentioned this earlier. For instance, the police cruisers. Yeah. Wouldn't it be cheaper just to kind of buy those outright, or yes? Or to oh yes. The question is, where would you find the cash to do it? Uh, you know, I think all of you saw in the budget you just passed, uh, we're, we're strapped for cash. Um, to the extent that we find that we have additional monies to appropriate in the, in the coming budget, I think there are places where we could put that 640000 or whatever you choose out of this into that um, present need as opposed to one, because once you've spent this money on, um, on these vehicles out of a cash appropriation, that cash is no longer available for whatever need. As I said, I would not have asked for a borrowing authorization for only $640,000 if we weren't coming in for others. And there are other vehicles and other equipment needs that the departments requested as a part of the budget cycle. This wasn't all of it. I called it back for what I thought was probably the most essential for these departments. But yes, if we were to buy them for cash, we could uh, save interest on it. Okay, because that's, so this would, uh, for instance, that particular line item, would those be kind of like a regular four or five year loan situation? Like, no, I'm these, just going through my own experience yeah, these buying would probably cars. Be, I think these would probably look, these look to me to be like probably eight year uh, borrowing. I think I'd have to look at the statute to see if we could do for any, any longer than that. I don't think so. I think probably five to eight years. Okay. And in any of these, I'm not sure if, if you consulted with the department heads on, on all of these requests, but um, any investigation on grants for some of these? Uh, well, we've been looking for grants for a long time. We couldn't even get a grant for our most urgent need, uh, which was the uh, fire truck. Um, okay. So I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, the request was based, every year we asked the departments to provide their capital request to the city as part of the budget cycle. Lately, you haven't been seeing much of that in the budget because there simply hasn't been the funding to pay for it with, right. with cash. But okay. we have, and I can provide this to you as well by Monday if you look for it, if you're looking for it. We have a formal um, evaluation structure in place which looks at uh, uh, assessing need, impact on whether it's uh, ongoing services which are public safety related or affect revenues. It's a fairly complicated uh, evaluation for each of these projects and these are the most important for the, for the departments at the moment. Okay. And just for clarification, what is a transit van for the public property department? What is that like to a I think it's to carry your work crews. Carry the equipment a van. Just a van. Like a pickup truck? It's a van. It's, uh, it's going to replace a 17-year-old van that's not going to pass inspection. So my plumber's not going to have a van if I don't get that truck. Okay. And when, when, does, that, uh, when does that expire? Um, like soon? Soon. Before the year's over. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And... Um, Ms. Petronio is here. Is there a way you can explain maybe what the box truck for the school department is for? Is it supplies or <coughs> meals or? Um, many years boxes. ago. <laughs> good evening, Council. <laughs> many years ago, we undertook doing internal moves ourselves um, within the system. We used to hire Kilroy movers at $110 an hour to do moving. Now, um, as of about eight years ago, we use our own custodial staff on regular time to move, whether it's moving classrooms or moving supplies and equipment throughout the, uh, the, throughout the system. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. What palm tree have you been sitting under? <laughs> <laughs> oh, mommy. That's that, that Italian olive oil. That's correct. Go ahead, Mr. Condon. <laughs> I don't know if I can follow that up. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to. <laughs> they must have some tanning booze in the uh, financial oh. department or the school department, huh? <laughs> A lot of copper tone over there. 
Uh, anyone? Councilor Stewart was next. Stewart, uh, just a question around, so if something is designated for the school department, so the, the Bobcat, I'm assuming that that, sh that can be used by DPW, so it's not restricted to school use? And if well, I think it would prim primarily be for their use, but I don't think there'd be a problem with, with sharing it. Uh, Capital equipment for the school department is uh, not does not qualify for the net school spending. It comes out of the city's general fund money. So I don't think that the school department would object if there was a need to share to do that sharing. And, and does that equipment, like the school buildings, it's owned by the city, correct? I'm sorry? So like the schools themselves, right? The yes, it's owned by the city. So it's, even though it says the school department is really owned it's by the city. It's being purchased for their need, but it's, it's owned okay. by the city, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Razak, you had a question? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Condon. Um, quick question on these vehicles. Are these all replacement vehicles, or are they any of them new vehicles? Well, they would be new vehicles replacing vehicles that are no longer so either at the end of their useful life or may perhaps even beyond. So these already all exist? We're just... Well, I think, yes, I think that, that uh, the, the first was the one described by Jim Kassiri as replacing yes, he answered this. My and question it's the same situation Kassiri. for Aldo Petronio. They've been doing their own work for a while now, and the vehicles that they've been using are, are at the end of their lives. So that leads to my, the second part of my question. Do we get any kind of credits or anything in turning in some of the old equipment, the old of, vehicles? In terms of, uh, yeah, we can, we can see if there's a turn it over to the like permit department and see if we can't, uh, uh, can't get a salvage price for it, yes. Okay, they good. may decide to save it for parts, too. Sometimes they do that. They hold they it for do. parts. Oh, do we do our own repairs? Oh, you mean if we trade it in? They well, it would depend upon what looks to be the most economical to do. Okay, very good. And you had mentioned earlier that you would get us a list, uh, maybe a detailed list of the different vehicles. You mentioned it a little earlier. Well, I said I, would get, I can get you a list of the city's vehicles, too, if you like. That uh, would be great. I'd appreciate it. Thank yep. you. Yep. Motion recommend favor, please. Second. Motion was made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. Favorable recommendation. Thank you, Councilor. Item, nine, uh, item 19, Madam Clerk. Order that the sum of 234000 is appropriated to pay costs of purchasing the items of departmental equipment described below, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto. Wide format color copier printer for the planning department, 14000 Voting machines for the Board of Elections, 220000 a total of 234000 And that to meet this appropriation, the Treasurer, with the approval of the Mayor, is authorized to borrow 234000 under and pursuant to General Law Chapter 44, Section 79 of the General Laws or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the City, invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, Chief Financial Officer, Martin S. Brophy, Treasurer, Tax Collector, Robert May, Director, Planning Department, John McGarry, Executive Director, Registrar, Richard Manley, Jr., Lock, Lord Edwards. Okay, Councilors. Well, this, again, the, the purposes I described before, I thought I'd pull these apart, so they were kind of grouped into sections that were similar. This is a um, uh, request on the uh, Planning Department. This request has been made for a couple of years now, and we've not funded it during the budget. And uh, John McGarry came up to me uh, earlier this summer and said, if you're going to be going out for bonding for a bunch of projects, our voting machines are about at the end of their useful life we'd be wise to incur uh, a cost to get those as well. So that's what this is. Council of Arms. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Uh, McGarry. S so because we have to have elections, are there any kind of reimbursement? <laughs> Oh, yeah, we do, don't we? Yeah, of course we do. Uh, <laughs> are there any kind of reimbursement programs that we can talk to somebody about, federal money or anything to, I mean, we have to have these no. machines, they have to be upgraded, they have to be handicap accessible, all that? We have, the state provides us with the handicap accessible machines. Oh, okay. For uh, marking the ballots. These machines are the AccuVotes, which Mr. Zioli wisely bought back in 1997. I thought they were bought in, bought in 1998. But when I researched it, I found they are uh, first used in 1997. Uh, so they're almost at 20 years, uh, which it's not so much the machines, it's the software and the uh, cons consumables that are, are getting harder to get, the memory cards, because of all the changes over the years. The Commonwealth has approved two new machines f for use in the state, new generation voting machines. Uh, so it would go out to bid between those two companies. Um, and um, just to, to give you a little background, because uh, Councilor Stewart had asked uh, when I was up here before concerning the, anything from the state. Every mm -hmm. time we run a state election, we do get three hours of um, manpower reimbursed. 
So since 2000, when I uh, came on board, the state has returned to us for state elections close to $300,000. So it's, that is picked up in your free cash every, every time it comes in. It just goes into the general fund and is picked up in free cash for the following year. So there is some money coming back because we, as a city, we run our elections from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. regardless of what the state, the state law allows us to do uh -huh. as a community uh, to provide our residents of Brockton with the best time frame in which to get out to the polls. So there is some money coming back. Um, we would lose it from the free cash, obviously, but uh, uh, and also just to let you know, I'm not going to be around forever. So it's something of I would like you will. to. You're uh, eternal. <laughs> well, in this role, maybe. <laughs> um, but as, as uh, <laughs> but as uh, oh, elections oh, oh. commissioner, um, you know, I would like to get it squared away for um, my future replacement. And, and so how many machines? Uh, 30, 31 gonna, machines. Over 31, okay. It's, it's the hardware plus the software that will go along with them. Excellent, okay. Um, okay, I think that's it. Thank you. That's it. Councillor Azak? Yes, good evening, Mr. McGarry. How are you? I'm well, Councillor. Thank you. The 31 machines, those are, those are just the handicap machines. No, these, these are our ac actual AccuVotes, the, the ones that, are, that are sit in the black box at, at the uh, polling locations. The state takes care of the other ones, the handicap yeah. machines. Okay, so that we don't incur any cost to the handicap. Ourselves. No. The only, cool. the only time we have to pay for that is for the city election. We have to pay for the programming for the handicap machines for city elections only. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Councilor Stewart. So these are our paper ballot machines, or are they all digital? No, paper? no. There's, you're always a firm believer in having right. a paper okay. ballot afterwards. These machines are much faster, and they, I, I, there's one model that actually scans the ballot as it goes in, so there is a, a visible record of each ballot that goes into it, too. So it's just the next, it's the new generation. It's taken 20, well, it's taken the Commonwealth probably a good 10 to 15 years to, uh, to look at the different machines out there and allow these two to be used in the Commonwealth. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Council. Motion recommend favor, second. please. Second. The maiden second to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. A favor of recommendation. Thank you, Mr. McGeary. And thank, thank you, you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Mr. Condon. Councilors, before uh, we conclude, we need to go back to item number two, which was a reappointment. Madam Clerk, if you could read that. Reappointment. James L. Bates of Brockton as a constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years. Invited James Bates. I don't know if Mr. Bates uh, was ever... Um, Become, I guess he wasn't president. Well, Mr. At all. Chairman, I, Mr. Bates, uh, did uh, I did talk to him. I know he has been um, a co constable for many years. I don't know if we could, we need to have him before us, or if I could just make a rec favorable recommendation to uh, whatever. Like, what, what's the council's council's wish, or do you want to have it yeah, brought make back? A, make a motion for a favorable recommendation. Second. second. Motion been made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council with a favor recommendation. Councilors, next uh, Monday evening will be city council, August 24th, right here um, at 8 p.m. Any other business? Chairman, I wanted to make uh, two moments of personal privilege, if I yes. could. Yes, you may. First one, I wanted to thank you as our president. Uh, Friday night's uh, headlines in the Brockton Enterprise I found to be uh, uh, disturbing uh, that the finger was pointed to the city council. It was off base, it was inappropriate, and it was flat wrong. So I want to thank you, Mr. President, for doing the duties and speaking on uh, all of our behalfs. Thank you. Uh, also, Mr. President, I want to take a moment of personal privilege in light of uh, agenda item number three, which is the uh, special election in October and November. I want to take a moment just to thank all the Brockton residents and those in the surrounding towns. I got a lot of calls, a lot of texts, a lot of emails urging me to be a candidate for state senate for the uh, second Plymouth uh, Bristol district. However, at this time, I uh, have decided not to be a candidate, and I just want to make that in a public forum. I want to thank everybody because it really meant a lot to me and my family, but it's just not an appropriate time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. A moment of privilege to Mr. Council President. Bond, yes, you may. I would like to announce, I've been asked to announce uh, by Mary Waldron, representing Bridgewater State University, that on the 1st of September, they will, there will be an, the inauguration of the new president, Mr. Fred Clark. Uh, he is the 12th president of Bridgewater State University, and the day will include uh, 11 o'clock, there's uh, a guest speaker, 12.30, there'll be a video presentation from 1 to 3, the inauguration will happen, and then at 5.30, there'll be uh, an open barbecue there. So if anyone is interested in attending, they can contact Bridgewater State University at www.bridgew.edu 
slash inauguration uh, for more information if people would like to attend. They're encouraging all the counselors to attend to welcome Mr. Clark. He was, uh, from what I understand, he was born, raised in Brockton. I'm um, very familiar with the city, and, and he's going to be a great asset to uh, the Bridgewater family. So what was the date again, Council? It is uh, Tuesday, the first day of September at 1 o'clock in the afternoon on the Boyden Quadrangle. Very good. Thank you. Any other, uh, any other business to come before this uh, committee this evening? See you down. The meeting's adjourned. All set. <laughs>